Hello, welcome back to another tutorial and today we're going to look at this jackpot game. This is a game where when you click spin it's going to give you three random numbers from one to six because they are dice and if we get three in a row we're going to get a winner. Now I'm going to have to keep clicking it to get a winner which may take a while but you can see how this works. It makes a great game to learn all about probability. And there we go, eventually I got a winner. It took me 34 spins, so it's pretty much bang on probability. After 34 spins, I would have expected to win 0.94 times, because of course it should take 36 spins for you to get a winner, one out of 36 chance. Now, I've added these in as extra, but today we're just gonna look at the basics of the game. So let's get to it. <laughs> So we can keep a scratch cat in the corner if we like, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom, we're going to choose a sprite, and we're going to paint. And we're going to choose a square, and to keep your finger, to make it a perfect square, we're going to keep our finger down on shift, and draw a nice square, move it into the middle here. And we also need to get a circle, change it to white, and we're going to keep our finger on shift again, and drag it out there. Now sometimes you might find that you don't have an outline on it, Sometimes your outline might be missing and you might get something like that. If you want your outline, make sure you click on your circle, click up here, change it to black, and four is a good, nice, thick outline. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to name this costume one. Okay, so in other words, this is dice for one. And then it's really simple. You're going to basically right click over here and duplicate, creating a second die. And then we can copy and paste move the dots to make what looks similar to a die. Then we right click and we duplicate again. You'll notice the costume name is matching the amount of dots on the die. That's not a really clever thing by scratch. It just means it's the third costume, but we're doing it. This will help us later on when we're trying to code if we've got a match. Okay, and we just keep on going like this until we have all six faces. And there we have it, six-sided die that will appear with six different costumes. And um, before we duplicate to get three die, we're going to add in the code. So down here, I'm going to call this dice one. And we're going to head over to code. And we're going to make this choose a random costume. There's a few different ways of doing this, but we're going to keep do it a fairly simple way. We're going to get a when flag clicked for now. And we're going to do a repeat. So we go to controls and repeat. And we're going to get a random, pick random, uh, 10 to 20. So this means we don't know how many times it's going to repeat this, which is going to allow us to have that random effect. Uh, actually, we can do a lot of maths on here, 10 to 20. We can do a lot of maths on here to decide whether that is the best number to choose. Because perhaps, uh, what I like to do as well is I like to randomize it uh, here. So if I choose uh, looks, switch costume to. And again, I do a duplicate this and use another random. So it really does random random it. Now we want to pick a random between one and six because that's how many costumes we've got. And then when we click on it, we get a real random effect happening. But there's some real good research in about picking random from 10 to 20, repeating 10 or 20 times, that shouldn't affect it because it's randomly choosing any number. If we didn't have this, if we had next costume instead, and it was randomly choosing between 10 and 20, then we are forcing probability slightly because it's only going to do it between 10 and 20 times. And you can start talking about modular ma mathematics and how uh, sometimes it's going to be difficult for a number to appear and there's going to be better chances for others. So just to make sure it's totally random, we randomly choose a costume as well. So it's not rolling necessarily one to six. It's just going to do it randomly. Now, this looks great, but it doesn't look like it's rolling, really. So there's a little, little trick you can do. Uh, there's a few ways of doing this as well. But I, what I like to do is I like to change the X and change the Y by just a small amount. So I'm going to click 2 and 2. Then I'm going to do a weight. And I'm going to change that to 0 0.1 seconds. 
And then I want to duplicate this again. I don't need that weight. Put that back in there. And I'm basically going to put it back again. So basically, we're just making it go up and down, left and right. And you get this nice little shuffle. And you can choose to make it a bigger shuffle. But if you do it too big, it doesn't look like it's shaking. It looks like it's jumping around. But you can get that, that visual effect of it moving. Now we can duplicate it three times. So we go down to the bottom here. And again, we just duplicate and duplicate again. Move them around. You may choose to have three different colors, in which case you just go into the costumes, change the colors of each background. But for me, I'm happy with having them all the same color. So now when I press green, I'm going to get them all shaking. And eventually, because we don't know when it's going to stop because of the random, it appears with one, two, three different outcomes. And you know, you could stop there. That could be it. You could have done enough there to then have a great lesson all about probability, work out what the chances are. You can easily change the numbers to pictures. You could easily change it to a four-sided die because we're not restricted to actually having a, a, a three-dimensional object with equal sides like dice have to be, we are doing it on a computer. So we could have a three-sided die if we want, and we would know that it would definitely still be random. Okay, so enough about that. Let's do a winner's check. Now, the problem with doing a winner's check here live on this tutorial is that we might not get a winner for a while, so I'll have to speed through it. But we're going to go to, and it doesn't matter where you do it, I think I'll do it on the scratch cap uh, here, and I'll leave, I'll leave him down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have... Uh, and I'm going to create a few broadcasts, okay? So I'm going to broadcast a message which says, check, okay? And I'm actually not going to put that on here. I'm going to say, when I receive, check. And I'm going to go back to dice one. And after about a second of the animation, we can be pretty confident that once it's repeated, it will wait a second, and then it will check to see if any of these numbers are the same. So it's going to broadcast this check. And over here, when I receive check, Scratch Cat's going to check if, the, if they're all the same or not. This looks like a really big, long piece of code. I'll explain it in a moment, but I'm just going to create it now. So the first thing I do is I get the when I receive check, and then I'm going to pull out an if then else and i also need this block you'll see that i've pulled out already uh, this one says backdrop number of stage what you need to do is you need to change this to dice one and then you get some different options here and i want costume number so i'm going to need three of those because i'm going to need one for dice two and for dice three and notice when i change them it goes to this it changes it back to exposition so i need to change it to costume number again so then we just need lots of equals and we need to do an and so we're going to say if costume number of dice one equals costume number of dice two so that's the first check and and then we need another equals the costume number of dice three equals the costume number of dice two. So that's checking that one matches with two and two matches with three. We don't need to check if one matches three because if one matches two and two matches three, then they are all the same. We drop that into the if, and you might have to zoom out to get it in. Okay. Then it's up to you what you want to put in if and else. So you can have a, a say, uh, yay, I win. Otherwise, no, I'll try again. Or you could actually create some more broadcasts. So you could broadcast a winner and you could broadcast a loser. And then you could put them in here. And then you could have all different things happening in other areas. You could have the background change. You could have sprites appear. You could have like I did in my example where I had a message saying what the probability was based on 
they were when they were a winner. So now when I click the green flag, it rolls them, it waits a second, and he says, no, I'll try again. And that, make this big screen so we can see, is basically the game. And like I say, we can go so much further in this. We can have different pictures so we can match it like stars and jackpot. And then from there, it's all about the maths. So it's all about then discussing, okay, I want you to go away and create your own jackpot style game. I want you to work out what the jackpot price would be. I want you to work out how much money you would charge to play this game, what you're getting out of it. And yes, you are kind of talking perhaps about how gambling works. And it's important from young mathematicians to realize that math gamblers don't win. And whilst there is some fun element to it, you're generally going to lose a lot of money. And I think that's an important lesson for our students to learn. So this is a great game to play. It's fun to play. You can use it for charity events. You could have students make different games and people come along and have a play of them, uh, allowing jackpots to be won, but equally raising money for charity along, along the way. But we can see here that the chances are one out of 36 for me to get all these three, any of these three in a row, and it's not happening anytime soon. So there you go. That's a nice, really simple, takes 10 minutes to create, but lots of deep mathematical conversations to have about it. And there's loads more on my slides, which are available in the link below the video. Hope you had fun creating this probability jackpot game. Mm -hmm.